Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Um, hope you are all well. Um, I am Parda. I'm a paediatric sleep consultant. My company's called Snooze Tots. I'm here for the next half an hour to answer all your sleep questions. So just send them in and we'll try and get through as many as we can. It can be a toddler sleep question. It can be um, a baby sleep question. Just send them all in and we will get started. Just tell you a little bit about myself while I'm waiting. So I work with um, predominantly parents one on one. Um, we we um, if you've got, if they, they come to me when they've got sleep issues um, and we can solve them together, give them advice. So this could be a one off phone call or it could be a two week support, um, whatever they feel they need. Um, I also do workshops for Let's Talk Birth and Baby. So we do newborn ones and we do four to eighteen month workshops. Um, so, oh, thanks, Laura. She's put a link to the sleep workshops here. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first question is, my babe, eight month old has started whining in the sleep and waking up whining all through the night, every night. You have, do you have any advice or tips? So sometimes um, babies make um, noises while they're kind of transitioning between sleep cycles. So making noise, if they don't wake up, isn't an issue. Um, so it's, it's just a moving between sleep cycles. So they get to the light stage of their sleep cycle and they're just moving and connecting to the next one. And they'll sometimes make noises. You think they're awake, but they're actually not um, really awake. So I'd absolutely leave them to it when it, that's happened. Um, you said they're waking up whining as well. So that, that, also, that could, I would say have a little look at a few things such as their, their kind of day sleep. How's that looking? Are they getting enough day sleep? Um, or are they are they going to bed overtired? Are they not? Are they getting too much day sleep? So something about their day sleep and the timings of that could be causing them to wake up whining. Um, so at eight months, you're looking at rough wake time of about three hours between sleep maximum. Um, Matt, and in terms of day sleep, you're looking at about three hours day sleep as well across two to three naps, depending on um, length of the naps. So. I would do that and then just in terms of responding to them um kind of you can offer them the support but let them fall back to sleep themselves if they know how to do this um so that's that's what i would say for that one um here we go next one is my little boy is two years and seven months we need some help with getting him to sleep all night in his room we have a good routine of bath book bed with a bottle um, and one of us will lay in bed until he falls asleep, which is about 10 minutes, then sneak out. He normally climbs into our bed in the early hours and wants another bottle to settle back to sleep. Recently, he's been waking by 10 p.m. to get into our bed, at which point we're not even in bed. How can we get him to sleep in his own bed all night? He's in a single bed um, and has a stair gate on his bedroom door. He fully understands what we say to him and his speech is really good, but he chooses not to listen when it comes to bedtime. Thank you. Okay, because you're... He's, you're, he's falling asleep and then suddenly you're not there. He's probably thinking, where's mummy and daddy gone? So what I would do is um, at this age, uh, look up the, the technique, the kissing, um, kissing game technique. But you're basically going to be um, telling him that, that you'll come back and give him a kiss if he stays in bed when you put him down to bed. Um, so and then you just lengthen the time you go back and give him the kiss. Um, and then he'll suddenly just fall, start falling asleep. Have a little look at that technique. I would say that's really good for this age. You want him to know that it's okay to fall asleep on his own because when he's waking like we all wake in the night, it's okay. He doesn't need to come into mommy and daddy's bedroom. Um, also, because you're giving him a bottle at his age, unless there was some necessary reason at two years they don't need um, a bottle um, um, of milk in the night. So I would say try and eliminate that. Um, and if he wakes up, use that same kissing game technique um, and try and keep him in his room. And if he does come into your room, silently return him, minimal interaction. Um, and he'll so it's just practice and um, praise when he does it. Um, but yeah, have a little look at the kissing game technique. Um, 
Du, du, du. My son, who's 19 months, the last two weeks when I put him to bed, has cried and wanted me to leave. Hasn't wanted me to leave. Um, if I stand in his room, he's fine. If I leave, he cries in the night. And um, in the night, he cries, and I have to stay in his room till he falls asleep. Any advice? So, first of all, Becky, um, what um, is, is he? What's his day sleep looking like, and what timings? What's his day sleep. And then what I would do is do something where you gradually move slowly out the room. So start with being really close to him. Any time he's crying, just give him support. Otherwise, just sit back, stay quiet. And then gradually over maybe like 10 days to two weeks, move yourself closer and closer to the door. Um, they do go through some sort of separation anxiety. And that's totally normal at this age. So by doing it really nice and gradually, getting yourself slowly further and further towards the door, giving them that kind of distance, but not doing it all of a sudden, you'll get the hang of it. Um, so that's what I would suggest to do um, with, with your son. Um, I have a three-year-old. Um, he still has a bottle of milk before bed. Recently, he had to spend a couple of nights with his grandparents. And since coming back from there, he's waking two to three times in the night asking for more milk. How can I stop him waking through the night for more? I'm a single mum of three. My older two were breastfed, so this is all new to me. And I feel a bit lost. It feels like I have got a newborn again, and it's so tiring. As I was just saying, at this age, it's he's, he's obviously just using it for comfort. Um, the milk, so it, at this age, I would just honestly say that I would give him his, you can, you can have milk before bed if he wants to. Um, but maybe try and kind of put a little bit of distance between him getting into bed and having his milk. And then in the night, I would just not be offering it. So if, if he's waking in the night asking for milk, just don't offer it to him. Offer him the reassurance other ways. Being firm. And if you need to incentivize, some kids take it to being incentivized. So he needs to stay in his bed. Um, and then he gets a reward if you want to use some sort of reward chart. Um, but also, is he still having sleep in the day? Try, I'd say, if he is, you might want to try and cut that um, out um, if, if it's kind of waking him up in the night. Um, but in terms of offering him milk, it's kind of one of these things at three years old, you can have to explain to him he no longer gets milk um, anymore in the night and just offer him reassurance um, without offering milk and keep him in his bed. My little boy is 11 weeks, or like weeks, 11 weeks, 11 weeks. Twenty-four hour period, he slept for one to two hours in the day and a two hour slot at night, that's been it. Even when held, he struggles to sleep and is clearly in some sort of pain. He's um, breastfed and I cut dairy out of my diet about five weeks ago, in case it was that. He's gaining weight well. And it's on the seventh fifth line. He's on medication for siren relief reflux, but whilst that appears to work, now doesn't. I just don't know what else to do. So any ideas welcome? Because there's obviously some sort of discomfort, I can't really advise on that. Um, I would say that you need to speak to um health visitor or doctor to kind of get to the root of the problem. Because if he's uncomfortable, it is going to probably disrupt the sleep. So I'd say really go back and speak to um get some medical advice. Um because if he's uncomfortable, it's, 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 that's why he's pretty much up. He's saying he doesn't really sleep because he's probably uncomfortable and having some discomfort. So kind of get to the root cause of that and then work on sleep. Um, my baby keeps waking three hours. He's 15 months breastfeeding. I don't think he's feeding. Are you meaning so he's waking three hours at night? Um, every three hours, Charlie. Just need a little bit more information what you're meaning. Um, and then you said, and I don't think he's feeding. So what, what do you mean? Um, is he not feeding at night? Um, just, just give me a little bit more detail of what, you, what you're asking. Um, I have a 10 month old that's really struggling with split sleep. He naps well during the day. I want to have two naps around two to four hours long combined. I've tried adjusting naps in the morning and afternoon, later bedtimes, earlier bedtimes, no bottle, 
I just don't know what else to try and I'm exhausted. He's teething, learning to crawl and pull himself up, so I know that this may be impacting, but in the last three months, he's only had four nights in a row where he slept and settled after a quick cuddle. He's not upset when he wakes, he's happy and playful. Okay, so when you say he's having two to four hours long nap combined, so at 10 months, you're kind of looking at maximum day sleep of around maybe as much as three, but I'd say two and a half um, is, is probably all he needs in the day. So maybe you're giving him too much sleep in the day um, so that when he wakes in the night, he's kind of like, I'm maxed out. So what you want to do is try and give him two naps roughly of about two and a half maximum three hours so split between the two so maybe one and a half in the morning or one hour in the morning whatever suits him and one and a half in the afternoon just kind of split it making sure though that there's enough wake time before and um, between the naps and before bed so roughly around three and a half hours wake time um after the last nap of the day ends the second nap and then bedtime just so enough sleep pressure builds so he's tired enough um, so I think this sounds like it's a scheduling issue more than anything. Um, also, it doesn't say here, does he know how to fall asleep himself? So if he independently knows how to fall asleep himself, when he wakes in the night, he's more likely to put himself back to sleep. So you can work on that. Yeah, teething, learning to crawl and doing all these things, it does disrupt their sleep. It can disrupt their sleep. Not every child will, but often does. So if he was a good sleeper and suddenly is is kind of being disrupted try and be as consistent and respond obviously respond to them um but try and kind of be as try and get him falling if he knew how to fall asleep himself before all this happened let him fall asleep back to sleep himself so use a kind of like you can go in to offer him support but let him fall back to sleep himself englantina um I, I can't answer your questions about your scan on your baby. This is all about baby sleep. Um, so um, I'm sorry, I can't answer that one. Um, my little one is four months and has always struggled to sleep in his next to me. His naps are all contact naps and less in the car are crammed. You can't seem to break this no matter how hard you try and I don't want to try out any tips. Again, you don't have to do cry out. There's so many different settling techniques you can use which don't involve crying it out. Um, you can, I can, I can work with you one-to-one -one or um, Laura, just put the link to the um, sleep workshop I do for Let's Talk Birth and Baby. If you want to join that, I go through different settling technique options um, that you can kind of offer reassurance and support them through the process of learning to kind of fall asleep themselves um, if that's something you want to teach them to do. Um, and also kind of setting them up with the right kind of schedule in terms of wake times and how much sleep they have in the day um, is so key. So it is an, an sleep environment, things like this. So I, I kind of go through all of that in the workshop, which would be perfect for you. Um, but in terms of how many, in terms of like the structure of the day, they should roughly be at this age, be having three to four naps. Um, wake time of about two hours long between sleep maximum. Um, and then four hours sleep in the day and it's kind of just practice and practice on using whatever setting technique that you're going to use to teach them to fall asleep themselves instead of having a instead of doing contact apps all will come together with practice um my baby is nearly six months and we have a nighttime schedule bath, milk, sleep. Um, however, every day since he turned five months, he's been waking up at 12 a.m. and unable, unable to keep him in the cot until 2.30. Again, he wakes up at 4 a.m. He is still breastfeeding. So it really just, it, that sounds like a few things. Uh, is, is, is your, um, is it boy or girl? He, um, does he know how to fall asleep himself? So that's something you could really work on because that will really help when he wakes up in the night. He'll be able to put himself back to sleep. So that's the first thing. Um, and then the other thing is, what's his schedule looking like? So six months old, what is he having? Roughly, they have two to three naps in the day. Um, wait time length of about two and a half hours between sleep. I mean, first nap of the day might be only two hours before um, between wake up and first nap. Um, you kind of just need to make sure his structure stays right because day sleep will affect massively um, how 
his night sleep goes. But also, if he's fed to sleep, he's going to expect that when he wakes instead of being able to put himself back to sleep. So it's a really nice age, six months, to start teaching him um, how to put himself to sleep. Um, just also making sure that the wait time between the last nap of the day and bedtime is um, is right. So if you're still on three naps, try and make sure that last nap of the day is finished by five o'clock basis um, and getting them down by about 7.30 if it finished at five o'clock. Um, so there's lots of little things that you kind of need to pull together to make, just making sure the schedules, environment, um, able to fall asleep themselves, those things will really help with his sleep. Um, my little girl has always been a good sleeper. She is nine months and since she was six weeks has slept through the night, luckily. However, the last uh, couple of weeks, she's waking about th three to four a.m. and crying. She isn't hungry or anything. She just wants to cuddle. But when she's asleep, if I put her back in her cot, she will wake up. It takes me almost an hour to get her back to sleep, by which time I struggle to sleep myself. I know I've had it easy, but I'm really struggling with this, so I'm tired. Can you give me any tips on getting her to sleep through again? Okay, so with, it sounds, for, I, I need to know, it, is she capable of putting herself back to sleep normally? Like, is she at the beginning of the bedtime? Can she put herself to sleep? So that's something, first of all, if she doesn't, that's something you want to work on. Um, what's her day schedule? So at nine months, you're looking at about two naps a day. Um, is she having too much sleep? So maximum around the three hour mark um, is all you want around across the two naps. Um, big time length of about three hours. So you kind of just need to make sure her schedule's right and making sure that there's enough wake time between that last nap of the day and bedtime. Um, and when she does wake in the night, you kind of need to be consistent in how you respond because it could just be a phase that she's going through. Um, so you ideally want to try and keep her in her in her cot and settle and support her from the side of the cot. So using a settling technique that you're there, you're supporting her, so support her when she's upset, sit back and stay quiet when she's not upset and just kind of gradually move yourself out of the room. That's what I would say is what you need to do. It might be quite tough for a couple of days of you doing this, even a week, maybe, maybe two weeks. But if you're consistent in how you respond, she'll start learning to put herself back to sleep. The other thing I would say is you do go through at this age, like separation anxiety. So things that you could kind of introduce, a comforter, if she doesn't already have a comforter, it's quite a good thing to introduce. So she can always just grab that in the night when she wakes and she'll use that to snuggle into. So I'll further the comforter um, with a comforter you'll find that sometimes they're not really that interested at the beginning. Sorry, a bit of here. Um, they might not be interested at the beginning. Just keep offering it to them. Wear it down your top before you offer it. So it's got your smell on it. Offer it to them, uh, when, offer it to her when she's um, having a feed. It's a really nice positive association. And just um, keep putting it back in her cot when she's asleep. And don't keep putting, giving it to her if she throws it out the cot. But yeah, just be a bit consistent on how you respond in the middle of the night and making sure a routine and schedule is spot on um, in the daytime will help as well. Um, Charlie, sorry, he's feeding the date. So what, what Charlie, he said earlier on. Where is it? What was your question here? Making he's fifteen months. He's waking three hours. Okay, so he's giving me a bit more detail here. He's feeding in the day, and when he wakes every three hours, I think he's just comforting on boob. I've tried it out, could cry out, but he's puking up, and I couldn't handle the clean up as a single mom. Absolutely not. He's napping two hours in the day and eating well. Apart from I have to blend into puree or thick mashes lumps make him gag and throw up. Um. I just need to sleep through the night as I'm starting work soon. So you don't have to use cry out. As I was saying to the other girls, there's so many other techniques you can use. Um, you just need to start teaching him to fall back to sleep himself. So you're saying he's napping two hours in the day. So, and he's, was he 15 months? Sorry, my brains. Uh, you said he was, you said he was 15 months, yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right um, in terms of day sleep, making sure it's about 12, 12 30. But does he know how to fall asleep himself? Can he put himself asleep at the beginning of sleep for a nap and a bedtime? So he puts himself asleep. And when he wakes in the night, 
you need to use make sure he's putting himself back to sleep. So using a settling technique, um, you don't have to use cry out. As I said, there's so many other techniques. That four to 18 month workshop that I did with Let's Talk and Birth the Baby, I go through different settling techniques that you can use at this age. Um, so if you want to kind of do that, because I can't go through every settling technique approach, but find something you are comfortable with doing. Um, as I said, that can be you staying in the room and offering support as opposed to cry it out um, or leaving the room. Um, it's totally up to you. So it's it's about being consistent um, and making sure his bedtime's not too late. So he's not overtired at bedtime. So roughly around seven o'clock, probably right, right. Um, and it will take work and consistency, but but you will get there if you can kind of be consistent how you respond to him when he wakes. Um, my baby is going to be two in June. I sleep in the living room as I am disabled and my baby has his own section in the living room with his own bed. But he keeps climbing in my bed in the early hours. I've tried to keep putting him in his bed, but I sometimes struggle at night with my wheelchair. Any advice you can give me? I have older children and they have room upstairs, but they keep letting the baby out of the gate. Um, that's really tough, Lisa, trying to find a solution where he can. So I would say you really need to um, try and incentivize him to stay because two years old is quite young to be um in their own bed they often don't understand the boundaries of stay in your bed they will get out um so that's why i always say closer to three if possible if they're not climbing out of the cot try and keep them in there because it, it's really really tough to try and keep them in their in their bed at this age um so you can it's going to just take a lot of silently returning him back to his bed um without chatting to him without kind of interacting with him because even if you get angry and you're like please just go back to bed, any sort of response is still um is still attention so you kind of want to do it silently really uninteresting putting him back to his bed I get it's really tough if you're in the, in the wheelchair um but in try and also reward him when he stays in his bed and um, make sure the room is nice and dark for him because he's less likely to get out when it's dark um so it, it, that, it that's that's kind of what i would say is kind of just take a lot of consistency of returning him it will get easier as he understands more as he gets a bit older um about the boundaries of actually staying in the bed Um, he can self-soothe, but best feeds and then self-soothes next to me. So you're saying he does still take the feed. Um, but is he using the feed to kind of get drowsy is what I would say. So at his age, I would try and just kind of disassociate the feeding and sleep. So if he wants to have a feed before bed, make it before bath, completely away from that. Um, and then not offering kind of you said he yeah it's just not offering anymore it's going to take um a little bit of consistency he can stand at the door and he's fine he just needs me in the room for some reason when i'm in the room he doesn't just he doesn't cry just when i leave so what i would do is make sure that he you just need to to kind of do it really gradually and get yourself out the room so when he's asleep, he's not going to know that you're not there. So you could actually try. You could try. Um, it's really tricky because he he's just leaving the room for some reason. When I'm room, he doesn't cry when I leave. Just cries when I leave. So he's awake when he he knows you're leaving. So leave when he's asleep. Um, and and just and it will just he just needs practice. Um, just stay. But if you just stay, but it will be a phase. He's probably going through a separation anxiety. But the more you can kind of just leave the room and if you need to return and do it and do it, but just keep leaving the room and returning. But also, it sounds like if you're going to be offering him feeds every two to three hours at night, he's going to expect that. So I would just stop offering him the feeds at night um, and he'll just learn to kind of go back to sleep because he's, off, he's using the feeds um, as comfort. Um, what else 
have we got? My 10 month old has three bottles, so eight ounces each. Is that okay? Um, every child is different. I can't really comment on in terms of are you saying three bottles in the daytime? Um, and also it depends on the baby's weight, child's weight, etc. Um, so I would speak to your um, doctor just to kind of just check in terms of his weight. Because some children still need more feeds and some need less. Oh, Zoe, I haven't seen your question. Sorry, there's quite a few here. Let me, let me go up. Where are you, Zoe? Zoe? Where are you? No, I can't see your question on this list. If you put it in again, I'll, I'll try and answer it, Zoe. Yeah, if you could copy and paste it, because I can't see your question, Zoe. No? God, we've flown through those questions, haven't we? Oh, thank you, Laura. I can't see it. My son is three and a half years old. I need to lay with him in his bed every night until he falls asleep. But when he wakes in the middle of the night, he gets into our bed, which is happening every night. And it has been like this since birth. As we used to co-sleep, he's very fidgety and kicks me a lot in my tummy and back. I'm pregnant, first trimester, so it's not safe for him to be kicking through the night. Can you suggest a gentle way to encourage him to sleep in his bed? I know it won't be easy. Um, uh, it won't be easy for me or him as we have co-slept for so long. But at the moment, I can't sleep because I'm so anxious he will kick me hard. Thanks so much. Okay, Zoe. So um, I don't know if you heard my suggestion. Three and a half, great time to use that kind of like that kissing technique. So let him put him in his bed, and then you'll say that you'll be back soon for him. And if he stays in bed, he gets a kiss. So just wait a couple of minutes, and then um, you just start extending that time that you return. Um, and then just you can you can pair that up with like kind of like reward as well. So you can um, if he kind of stays in his bed, then you give, you kind of have a reward chart, and um, he can have a prize boy that he wants if he if he if he responds to kind of incentivization. Um, but yeah, really, just kind of give him lots of praise when you're going to give him his kiss when he um, if he stays in his bed. If he doesn't stay in his bed when you do the kissing technique, then just silently return him back to his bed. And kind of start the process again. If he comes into your room, you're going to just have to silently return him without my, any interaction and just keep on doing it. Um, and then some some kids will work to even kind of like those kind of plots that change colour. So he's got to stay in his bed until it turns um, turns it turns green. Um, different there's different ones out there. You could try using that sort of thing. Um, but using that kissing technique is really lovely technique because you're going in there giving him kisses and praise because he's staying in his um, bed. So that's how I would do the bedtime. And then in the middle of the night, you're gonna to have to use the same technique. So once you silently return him, say that you'll be back um, if he stays in his bed um, to give him a kiss and just kind of keep extending over time, the kind of the, the interval and he will fall asleep whilst you're out of the room in that interval. Um, and it's, but that's a really nice gentle way to teach him. Um, Selena, um, so my 10 month old cannot crawl, any advice to guide? I deal with sleep, um, I, I, um, I can't really advise on anything um, other than that. Um, what do you think about me trying a dummy with him as I, I'll have to be the last one, as I did try when he was younger, but any kind of plastic he just rejected and that's why I haven't been able to get him on a bottle and he won't drink milk from sippy cup or a bottle but happily take water so I've, so I, was all, I also have tried going in and rocking him when he wakes which doesn't work, I've also had my mum come today, I forgot to mention that he's done this from day one, um, remind me Charlie, yours is age was yours
so he was the 15 months I think yeah 15 months he doesn't need a feed anymore so I would really try and um not offering the feed anymore so as you said I wouldn't introduce a dummy at his age especially because teeth and everything it's not necessary have you got a comforter has he got a comforter make sure that he's got a comforter that he um that he can kind of grab and get really attached to that as well um and just no more no more um milk feeds um is what I would suggest um you could do um do I also if you're going to try rocking him whatever you do at the beginning of so if you start introducing rocking him back to sleep he's going to expect that so it's kind of one of these things where you kind of have to be really consistent use a settling approach and just kind of get him um get him comfortable falling back to sleep without you so try a comforter if you haven't already um that's why i would also suggest Also, is his room dark enough? That's another thing I would say. Make sure the room is pitch black. Um, thank you very much. We've run out of time. I wish you could answer more for you guys. Um, so hopefully that's been useful and I will see you in a fortnight's time. So not next um, week, but 